Let's talk for a minute about relational databases. So what's a database? A database is simply a collection of stuff. It can be just about anything. And on the web, it really can be just about everything. Um, it's different from, I mean, you might say, uh, like, this This is a, a, a database if it's a, a, um, a document, right? Because it's a collection of stuff. The difference between a document and something like Excel or something like a database is this provides some kind of structure for the data. So um, it's a way of storing structured data. So if you wanted a broad uh, definition for a database, you might say it's a way of storing structured data. And in fact, if you've ever used Excel, a database shouldn't be that strange a concept to you. Um, a database is basically a collection of tables. And in Excel, we call those sheets. And the sheets have a number of fields across the top, which are the are the uh, columns, and a number of records, which are the things that go down. Now in Excel, I can just randomly start over here, for example, but you can't do that for a database. Basically, you start at the upper left-hand corner and you have a number of fields and a number of records. So, um, and, you, depending on how much you use Excel, um, you may not realize this, but the records can be typed. So, for example, if we had um, uh, item and cost, and we had a rock, and it costs 10, that 10, this column could be lots of different things, right? It could be percentages, or it could be money, or it could be a, a, a decimal measure. So here we want it to be money. Same is true in um, in a database. You generally have each field defined by what can, it can hold. It can hold maybe text, or maybe it holds a date, or maybe it holds um, uh, even something like an image, a blob, a binary blob of stuff. Um, so it can hold, or, or a very large amount of text, like a whole document. So it can hold lots of different things in these individual columns. So just to, as a reminder, we have records, and we have data values inside the record, and then we have fields across the top, and we can have more than one table. In fact, we usually do have more than one table. In Excel, if I had, for example, a student roster, or if I had a even better yet, a grade book, I might have the student ID, um, the last name, the first name, the email, the uh, phone, the address, etc. And I might even have a first assignment uh, and give a grade, for example. So I might have a whole bunch of things all across the top. Uh, in databases, generally we try to split those things up. It's part of what makes it relational. So here's, for example, students, participants, and activities. Basically, we have students with IDs all in one table, and then participants in another table, and then activities in another table. This is called a foreign key. The reason for this is it gives us a way to very quickly look things up, and it keeps the database as small as it needs to be. So for example, um, we've got uh, a number of activities. It seems silly to say if we know that tennis is always going to cost $36 to do 36 here and 36 here, or for swimming 15 and 15, it's just redundant. Whereas we can have a short sort of price listing here and have it go all together. It also can, allows you to combine things together. So this is what makes a relational database relational. That is keeping the database as simple as possible. Now, if you had an address, you might want to put all the columns in there for, you know, city, state, um, zip code. You might want to have those all in the same table. It seems silly to have a zip code table and then a city table and then a state table because all of those address items kind of go together. But you'd really want to keep um, your databases as trim as possible when it comes to large numbers of <clears throat> fields or columns. The other thing that's important is that every database has to have um, what's called a, a primary key, and that key has to be unique. So for human beings, social security numbers are a good thing to do because, and this is why so many companies want that from you, um, because you basically have one number for every person. That's not true of names. That's not true of phone numbers. That's not true of a lot of things. But for your database, every table has to have at least one field, one column, 
where e each item is unique. So in this activities table, that little star there in this, in this, you know, the star is just for our reference, is saying that this is our key, our primary key. We could not have another tennis or another golf. If we did, it would not work. So it's important that you understand that you must plan for at least one thing to be a primary key. If you don't have something that's naturally a private primary key, often you'll establish one by calling it ID. And so you'll see that many, many, many applications on the web have tables with a key that is called ID.